Hello underwater photographers. Today, we're gonna to talk about using a slow shutter speed to create creative images. Now, this isn't going to be settings in terms of what a shutter speed does, but we'll address how to use a slower shutter speed to create a number of different creative effects that will serve to create some, some variety in your portfolio and create some really interesting images. So let's get it going. So what is a slow shutter speed underwater? It's exactly how it sounds. We are slowing down the shutter speed in our manual camera settings in order to create some intentional motion blur in the images. And there are a number of different reasons we wanna do that, that we want to use a slow shutter speed with a lot of specific examples. So you can see in this image that's behind me and now on the screen that we've got a kelp forest and that everything is waving. The kelp fronds have a little bit of movement. This is just one small example of how we can apply a slow shutter speed to create an effect. And what do I mean by a slow shutter speed? Let's say we are shooting wide angle and our default shutter speed is 1 1 25th of a second. What we're going to do is slow that down to something anywhere between 1 60th of a second down to 1 quarter of a second, 1 6th of a second. And with that shutter speed going clack, clack, it's staying open longer, letting in more light, and then closing. So two things as a result of that. One, you're getting more light in the camera, which we can control through the other exposure variables as well. But then two, because the shutter is open, think about when the shutter opens and the subject is here, then when the shutter closes, it has time to move. So because the subject is moving while the shutter is open, it's going to create a blur. When you combine that effect with our strobe, which we've watched in some of our lighting tutorials and know that the strobe is going to freeze any motion, now what we have is a combination of a blur plus motion being frozen. So we'll get a little bit of blur, but then also a crisp, sharp image. If you were to use a slow shutter speed without a strobe, you're just going to have a blurry mess, and in general, it won't look that good. Maybe only specific shooting situations and certain subjects would look good like that. So you definitely want to be using one or two strobes when you're using a slow shutter speed. The exact shutter speed you're going to use really depends. Like I said before, it could be one quarter of a second, one sixth of a second, all the way up to one fortieth of a second. Basically, it's going to depend on how fast your subject is moving. In our kelp example, it's moving very slowly, so I'm going to use a slower shutter speed. If you have a darting sea lion or something like that, then you're going to want to use a faster shutter speed because you'll still have some motion blur since that subject is moving so much quicker during the period that the shutter is open. Slowing down the shutter speed is pretty straightforward, right? So let's talk about a few different examples. So the first example is this squid photo right here during a night dive. And what I did is I slowed down the shutter speed in order to depict a little bit of the movement of the squid. Now there's a few things going on here. I combined a slow shutter speed with video lights with strobes. So what you see here with the blur is because the shutter speed is slow, so we've got that movement during the period that the, the shutter is open for the camera. Then we also see white streaks, and those are caused by my video lights. Those video lights are on, they're lighting the squid, and what happens is they're a white light, so they're showing that movement of the squid, right? If the water was all black, we wouldn't see the squid. So my video lights are creating that light on the white squid, and that's why we see those white squiggly blurs. To finish it off, I fired my strobe flash which freezes the motion. On this particular shot, I was using colored strobe gels, and that's why the squid are different colors, but the principle is the same. White streaks from the video light, and then you've got the flash freezing that motion. Another great example for using a slow shutter speed is to depict behavior. So in these examples of juvenile sweet lips, you'll notice these little fish, if you've seen them in the Indo-Pacific, swim very quickly and very erratically. They're the size of a dime and will hide out in pockets next to coral structure, sometimes more open sand, but generally around some sort of structure with other fish fry and young fish. But they are waving back and forth. Imagine the most ferocious bull, you know, jumping up and down and doing its thing. So they are moving nonstop, really challenging, really difficult to shoot. And if you add a slow shutter speed, you're able to really show that tail whipping back and forth and create some of these streaks that show movement, which makes the photo pretty exciting. In this next example, we also wanna show movement and chaos and depict energy. So this is actually shot from a GoPro. So full disclosure, I did not intentionally use a slow shutter speed, but on this night dive, shooting still photos with very minimal video light, uh, the GoPro chose a slow shutter speed to try and expose the scene. I think it came out pretty cool. It's something different. Yes, where you're manually controlling your shutter speed, you might get a crisper, sharper image, but this is just a fun one from shooting a GoPro. And you'll notice there's a lot of movement, a lot of blur, a lot of motion, 
but it adds to the excitement of the image while diving with these mobulas at night. And lastly, there are a number of fun effects you can practice with a slow shutter speed. Here's one example of a barrel sponge with a spin shot. So essentially what I'm doing is spinning the camera while I'm shooting. So we have the same thing. All the spin motion around the edges of the frame come from the motion blur as the shutter stays open and we move the camera by twisting. And then the strobe fires very quickly to freeze the subject that it sees. So that's why the barrel sponge is relatively frozen. The strobes aren't going all the way into that background where we see the green water and the rest of the reef and substrate. So we're freezing just the barrel sponge. And yes, it's not totally crisp, but it is fairly crisp and adds to this fun spin effect. So those are some good examples. Anyone can do those with any camera on manual settings. You can experiment, just remember that you need strobes. One other important note is that several cameras have a rear curtain sync. And that comes into play when you want to show forward motion. Generally, the camera shutter will come up and fire a flash at the same time, and then you'll see some of this movement before the shutter drops. And if you've got something like a spin shot, you're not going to notice any particular direction of movement. If, for example, we want to get a photo of a shark swimming towards us, and we want the motion blur lines from behind so that the nice crisp face of the shark is, is nice and crisp and coming towards us. You know, we've got the tail streaks from behind the shark. Then in that particular case, we want to use this rear curtain sink. And what that does is it allows the strobe to fire when the shutter closes for the camera. So the shutter opens, you get light streaks, and then the shutter closes and freezes the motion, which is why you'll get the crisp part of the image at the end of the exposure versus the beginning, which is good for depicting forward movement. So not all cameras have that. It's a particular setting you're going to have to look on your specific camera. If you do have questions, let me know and I'm happy to help with that. So that's pretty much it. Go out, experiment with some slow shutter speeds, add some variety and some diversity to your portfolio, and that will always help you get those oohs and ahs. See you guys in the next video.